Hello everyone, uh, this is Patrick. Uh, I'm gonna tell you so how happy I am to finally own a full version of Sona, Studio Edition though. Been using that for about 20 years, other versions of the Cakewalk product. So I'm gonna talk about uh, setting up Sona to work with my hardware today. And uh, I have two very specific hardware. Uh, one is the Realtek integrated audio chipset on my laptop. And then the other one is actually Steinberg audio interface. It's CI1, right? I gather CI stands for computer interface. So before we start doing anything at all to avoid lots of hours of frustration, turn off all the audio devices and disable them from Windows. Some of the pro-grade audio devices um, and maybe some older audio devices uh, demands that the audio software like Sona have exclusive access to that hardware. So Windows being a multimedia uh, platform uh, allows multiple sources to address that hardware for audio output purposes and some of that hardware have drivers that do not allow that. So in the course of our exploration we may not get audio sounding that might not be because that the connection is broken or we have a faulty driver. It might be that Windows is just keeping that audio driver all to itself and the audio driver doesn't then allow other software to take over the ownership. Here I have my Sona X2 Studio open and this is the default workspace uh, with the master buses metronome and preview and um, I've deleted the default audio and MIDI track so I'm gonna show you a few places where to watch out for so if I hit P to bring up preferences which you also can access by from the menu here edit preferences so that can be accessed from the menu but I'm gonna just hit P first I'm gonna make sure that my MIDI devices are all connected up and listed and checked okay that should be all that you need to do for MIDI devices so for audio devices the first thing I'm gonna check is uh, what mode of drivers I'm gonna use okay um, even before this I'm gonna update my I, which I have already done so actually uh, update my audio drivers for both my devices uh, there's one more drive device driver that you need to update uh, that is the ASIO driver so ASIO is um, I think it's independently developed that driver uh, works with a lot of hardware that otherwise couldn't talk to uh, DAW software uh, digital audio workstation software so if you have that uh, installed, I'm using uh, FL Studio, so that's uh, installed for me as well. So if you don't have that, or if uh, Kickwalk doesn't install it for you, uh, go find it. I'll show you where it is, uh, the, the website later on. So um, there are a few modes of the drivers that we can use. And um, right now I'm using WDM, something uh, developed for Windows. And um, just switch between those. So this is one of the places that you should be looking out for. Okay. Um, and then under driver settings, um, be very sure that you're setting the right settings here. Okay, for I know for a fact that um, Steinberg CI1 only has one kind of audio driver bit depth. So it's going for 44.1, but the bit depth is actually 24. So to get uh, Steinberg audio interface working, I should be setting this at 24. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Go into my devices. Since I'm at WDM, the list here is quite dependent on whatever mode this driver is in. If I switch to ASIO, it's going to be listed whatever ASIO compatible uh, devices there are. So now it's WDM, so let's go into our devices and just take a look. This input drivers which are like microphones, um, line in, whatever your audio devices allows you to plug in. So I'm going to ignore that for a while because I'm using my microphone to record this video tutorial. So uh, it should work uh, with no fuss. So what I'm going to do is just turn on uh, this Steinberg CI1 and all of these, okay, for my Realtek integrated sound chip, I have two headphone outs and I have one uh, extra one, I think is to the internal speaker. So and I, I have a SPDIF. I'm just going to turn all that on and then I'll, I can cycle through each one of them and see whether I have uh, audio sounding. So uh, once I do that, I can hit apply. Okay. Sometimes if your instrument is not listed on that list, you can change different configuration and then hit apply again and that list should update. Okay. There's some kind of warning which we can actually overwrite. So I'll and then uh, if I hit close, it will try and uh, talk to the drivers again. So just wait for a bit. Whatever drivers that I have assigned to, 
you would see uh, that this was empty before and now it had all the drivers that I ticked so it was Steinberg and then the three outputs from my integrated audio chip so um, what we're gonna do to test now I'm gonna go into my synth and add a soft synth okay, I'm gonna use my M1 LE which is the light version of the Corp M1 synthesizer right now so we have two um, I'm gonna hit uh, shift F to uh, frame up all my tracks what I have is this soft synth that uh, handles all the MIDI data okay and then I have a track that contains just the MIDI data that talks to the soft synth or my virtual instrument which then uh, pushes the audio to my master bus right so if I select my MIDI um, I should be looking at the left side so I'm gonna try and hit a few notes on my uh, MIDI controller uh, this is coming up that shows that my MIDI input device is working no problem okay but because it's just listening out for uh, to all inputs and all channels right if I have like two MIDI input like maybe a MIDI guitar and then uh, maybe a breath controller or a keyboard controller then I can just let the track uh, be listening out for a certain device only okay but now I'm just uh, enabling f uh, to listen out from all devices and then this is I this is O so this outputting to uh, my M1 LE which is this soft synth okay so that's how the signals being routed if I select now this soft synth track this soft synth is um, accepting my input from my synth so if I select my synth I'm seeing that uh, it's outputting to uh, this stereo okay and then now I come to my soft synth and it's saying that it's taking my input from this M1 LE stereo which is whatever's coming out from here and then output is going into the master so if I have any like uh, bus or summing buses or groupings of uh, multiple soft synthesizers I should be pushing it to uh, one of the buses but now um, if I just click on here I can either go to the master bus or any of the sub buses or straight to one of my hardware devices okay so I'm just gonna let it go to the master bus and here it shows me conveniently my master bus okay, side by side so um, if I don't want to see that I can just do this but uh, okay this strip exactly equals to this strip if I select this I just see that master bus without that soft synth but now I'm gonna just select my soft synth and then master bus side by side you can see that the soft synth is going to the master bus and the master bus is going out to nothing because before that I didn't have any hardware set up but now that we, I've chosen a couple of drivers I'm gonna just drop down see my list of drivers right can okay, just select my Steinberg first okay and I'm gonna hit my uh, MIDI controller again okay so once I see something going into the master and it's uh, the view meter uh, when I see the view meter go up and down uh, means that the signal has gotten through and the hardware is actually working if the hardware is not working I would not have any uh, reaction from the view meter so if I scroll back here I can see that my Steinberg uh, you may not uh, be hearing the sounds uh, any sound from my picking up from my mic but actually it is working okay so uh, this driver is working now I'm gonna select another driver and go through them uh, one by one so this is the Realtek integrated audio and I'm gonna choose stereo I'm gonna hit my MIDI controller again Okay, and it is working as well so um, I'm very happy about that I'm gonna go back to my uh, properties okay. if both your hardware actually support that 24-bit then you will be a fortunate person okay if I have two contradicting hardwares that one just supports 16-bit and then the other only supports 24-bit uh, I might be in a bit of a trouble unless your audio driver is capable enough to convert or bridge one of the hardware to listen out for the uh, or convert that audio signal into a different bit rate that the hardware can take so now I've figured out that Realtek output 1 and 2 works I can just disable 3 and 4 okay to uh, minus that confusion so I'm just gonna route that to 3 and 4 again uh, okay as a stereo pair and just show you that okay it's still working but no sounds coming out because I don't have anything connected to the line out 
Okay, it's still working. So when it doesn't work, the master wouldn't even sound. So this should be all you need to know, actually. So that's the end of my tutorial. And these are, after many combinations and configurations, uh, that's what I had to go through. So if this works for you up to this point, you can just feel free to stop the video anytime and just enjoy your software and your hardware. Uh, but for those who are really diehard uh, ACO fans, okay, uh, you live by uh, ASIO drivers, I'm just go gonna attempt and show and see if my drivers actually work. At some point in time, I've had like the Steinberg working, but the real tech's not. Uh, through the ASIO drivers. At some other points, I have the, the real tech working and Steinberg not. So I'm gonna just uh, change my driver mode, hitting P again, my playback and recording. I'm gonna change this to ASIO. Once I do that, go back to my devices. This is still in the WDM mode, so I'm gonna hit apply and this list will update. So apply and wait a little bit, and then now it's gonna complain, say uh, there are no audio. Um, listed so I'm just gonna put none first so this is like a remapping uh, tool for, for you if you know something else is working you can just uh, say okay now uh, route all that through to the new device so after I've done this you see that uh, all the devices are just ASIO for all so there is a control panel separate from so that's the drivers the ASIO drivers control panel so one way you can bring it up is from driver settings and you hit uh, ASIO panel. If you don't see it showing, uh, by this time you should have in your system tray an icon that says uh, ASIO for all. So uh, if you don't have this or Kickwalk doesn't install this for you, you can go to www.asioforall.com and make sure that uh, you have your drivers updated to the latest version. And now in this driver I'm seeing um, a list of devices that I have, hardware devices. Okay, this NVIDIA is uh, I'm using a HDMI cable, so maybe it's expecting audio to go through. Uh, so I have that uh, turned off. So this is the way to turn it off. This is the way to turn it on. So if you are not getting uh, through to that hardware or it's not working, you can just turn off, go to devices, hit apply, and then turn on again, hit apply, or something like that. So uh, and hope that the driver refreshes itself. You can see that my mic input is off. That's because I'm routing my um, creative microphone into the mic in jack so uh, it can't take over that port so I'm just gonna leave everything on okay and hit apply again sometimes it starts complaining but uh, you can just ignore it okay, so now we're gonna do the test and try rerouting so you can see that uh, the master has no output so I'm gonna just try one by one again uh, this is the ACO one I'm going to try the Steinberg stereo. I'm going to try playing it again. Okay, now you can see that uh, my it's receiving the MIDI channel is receiving the MIDI controller, but it's not getting through to the soft synth send and the master's uh, VU meters. So we know that the driver is not working. Now for my Steinberg, I'm going to hit P again. Go to my driver setting. It doesn't allow me to do my 20, uh, 16 bit or 24 bit which is good because I know that the Steinberg is like 24 bit uh, okay uh, let's say if I turn off Steinberg or something then maybe it allows me to change my bit rate to 16 but I'm not gonna do that uh, with this same configuration I'm gonna try um, my real tech okay so the first output I'm gonna try again okay it's not getting through I'm gonna route to my second stereo output pair not getting through. Try number three. Okay, not getting through either. So, uh, a lot of trial and error. I have to go and hit my P again. Maybe I'm gonna turn off everything and maybe just leave Steinberg. So, apply. Okay, so, and then hit close. And then now I'm going to try and so it's complaining again, but just hit OK. I'm going to try and route that to the Steinberg stereo and play. Okay, nothing's happening. Um, I might want to bring back my ACO. And you can read up on what all these are, but I'm, I'm just doing some tra trial and error. Since it says like 16 bit or something, I'm going to try turning on and off and then going back to my preferences. And then since I've like changed it to like 16 bit, maybe I'll just resample it also and then just 
hit apply again well you get the idea but all the controls that I've shown you are all that was needed for me to get some connections okay I was you know I spent like a whole night an hour and a half or two hours I was ready to contact the support from Cakewalk but well I figured I'd give it an, uh, another go and well, I managed to get it working so then again I'm gonna use my master and okay none stereo okay still not working so probably now it's a good time for me to turn off and then go to my preferences again um, since this guy is turned off so only the real tag remains so I'm gonna just uh, with the exception of SPDIF I'm gonna turn on the real tag uh, three output ports of real tag and then just hit close and then uh, try it again so real real tag okay so now uh, it's working okay although I'm not hearing it actually uh, I think I actually have the driver disabled for Windows. Uh, yeah, so it might be a line out driver as well. So this might be my line out too, which I'm not connected. So this is the third pair. Yeah, I, I'm not hearing it again. But uh, from this uh, view meter, we know that it is connected to something. So uh, I can be pretty sure if I connect a, a headphone jack or something, I should be able to hear it. Okay, so again, I'm going to try turning on issue for all for my Steinberg okay and see if it if it works apply okay so uh, this is one of the times when you do update apply and it doesn't happen uh, it doesn't dis uh, enable this so I'm gonna close this sometimes you have to restart the software restart sonar or so that it can restart the driver or something like that or maybe it's because i'm forcing stuff to 16 bit so it's not compatible with steinberg so you know anything could be happening uh well if you're a technical person and you know exactly what's happening it's good and you can explain everything that's happening and you know exactly what's going on but um well i'm not i'm sort of like tank technical but not that technical so bringing out my Okay, so I've restarted the preferences and read from the driver again and now there's this Steinberg being listed and en enabled again so I'm gonna just choose Steinberg I'm gonna route that master bus to be making use of that hardware Okay, and it's already chosen I'm gonna play my MIDI controller again Okay, so and it works Okay, now I'm gonna be adventurous take that step and enable the ACO driver for real tech again apply hit OK close it I'll try and route the master to one of the real tech drivers so right now it's still using the STN Steinberg CI1 the third pair of stereo okay and it is working again it is not sounding on my sound card because I disabled it in window, uh, Windows, uh, the Windows audio driver. So, um, well, I've managed to do it with uh, this uh, ASIO driver. That was my configuration. Uh, I hope you have uh, good fortune of uh, being able like me. Okay. So with this configuration, I can use different tracks and, and address different hardware. Uh, cards if I have more than one audio interface uh, I can have a flexibility of um, doing all that separately processing and then come back coming back as a stereo uh, final mix uh, that kind of thing so you know sonar is a very flexible software and it's totally capable of whatever kind of studio setup you're having so yeah uh, I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope that it sort of helped you uh, one way or another even if you didn't have um, uh, CI1 from Steinberg or a real tech. I hope that uh, this workflow and um, this concept behind and the principles can help you uh, get your studio up and running. So now go make some music. Peace out.